I'd like to welcome Shelly to kind of, you know, deep dive into her story and, you know, provide us with a, a good understanding of, well, where her district came from. So thank you again, uh, Shelly, for joining us. And, you know, I recall when we first talked that you mentioned that Class Wallet changed the quality of life for your team. Yes. Um, so I'm hoping that you can share with um, the, the group here how your team managed your teacher supply purchases prior to implementing Teacher Wallet and you know, give a little bit of background about how much time was involved in that process, how many people, as well as the challenges that your team was experiencing. Okay. Um, prior to jumping on to Class Wallet, we did old school requisitions, paper requisitions. The teacher would fill one out, whether it was with receipts attached for reimbursement or something they wanted to, us to create a purchase order or submit the order online for. Um, and it would, it would, I guess, circulate at the school between the teacher to an assistant principal or to the principal who would approve it and then over to us. And anywhere from three to five desks that paper would travel through this department, depending on each desk's function. Um, teachers could plan on being reimbursed if that's all it was. Honestly, we were pretty quick with that. We pay bills at least weekly. We try to every Tuesday and Thursday. So we can reimburse people pretty quickly mm -hmm. as long as their paper travels through the school and then through the desks here efficiently. And most of the time we were pretty good with that, but it's all of the $15 and 41 cent orders. And then maybe there was one for $70 and, you know, you divide $500 by even three or four transactions times all the teachers that we had. That's a lot of transactions every year. Mm -hmm. And they were all pretty small. We did have a few teachers, maybe two or three at each location that would hold all their receipts and submit their entire requisition with receipts attached for $500 at once. We love those people. Those are our favorites. Um, but most folks, they didn't know what they needed until they needed it. And they would submit those items or two or three items to us one at a time, two at a time, three at a time. And I know you guys know what that's like, because that's probably what some of you guys are doing now. I looked back to um, the 1819 fiscal year, just because I felt like that was the most recent real year we had. And we had a, just over 1,500 transactions that relate to this specific budget, which is the state mandated money. Um, that is all that we used it for this year. Mm -hmm. We will be expanding it next year because we love it so much. Um, but this year, as opposed to the 1,500, and I think it was 44 transactions that I, that I pulled up for the last fiscal year, this year we had a transaction to send the money to the company, and then we booked eight journal entries. And unless there's anything clean up for orders that maybe were placed and they didn't get fulfilled, that's it. So we went from 1,544 transactions to less than 10. Now I'm keenly aware that next year when we expand it, there will be a handful more, but it's it's right. been mind blowing. I am not a, I'm a techno peasant. I do not like technology. I'm a pen and pencil and paper kind of girl, but I love this portal. My staff <laughs> loves this portal. Our teachers love this portal. Yeah, that's awesome. You and you shared with me um, prior to um, implementing Teacher Wallet that you guys had a twenty-one digit code that and you teams. had to associate to every transaction and every teacher each year. Can you kind of share a little bit about that from an accounting background? Yes. Yes, and and. In fairness, we still have the 21 digit account code, but because we wanted a unique budget unit for each teacher in the 1819 school year, I looked this up this morning just so I could know we had 133 unique budget units that's 21 digit codes for our staff to to complete all these transactions for the year. This year we had four. That's that frees up so much room and of course all of we've had to identify and and I guess use a lot more program codes for my Arkansas schools. They've added some new program codes this year for the ESSER funds. A handful of those codes we were already using on these budget units. And so mm -hmm. those are now freed up to use however the state tells us to or other ways that we need to. It was just burdensome, really, 
in hindsight from just about every aspect of how we were doing that process before versus how we're doing it now. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you had shared um, a little bit about, um, and I apologize, I'm going to go back one slide so I can see my notes, but um, you had shared that, um, you know, as far as implementation goes, it didn't, you guys uh, adopted the class, class wallet, but held off a little bit on implementing. But, we you did. know, talk, a uh, talk about once you guys decided to move forward, um, <clears throat> how much time did it take you guys to get it off the ground? Eight days. Eight days is all it took from the time we said, okay, this is, this is how we're going to do this this year. We sent the template into the company and they went, they sent out live emails in a, a week and a day. And I, I do want to touch on why we waited so long for, for anyone who may have this concern. The reason that we didn't go live sooner is because we were considering this portal to be I guess, to subsidize what we were already doing. And from a budgeting perspective, that seemed like a nightmare. I was going to have to have somebody on staff reconcile, okay, what has this teacher done in class wallet? And what do they have still available to do the old school paper, uh, pencil and paper requisitions? Um, that just seemed like a bookkeeping impossibility, if I'm being honest with you. So once I could talk our superintendent into allowing this to be the only platform that we use for the year. All of this money had to be spent this way this year. That was the magic for us. So if that's something that you're wondering about, I can't tell you how it worked for us doing it that way because we decided not to, but I can tell you it works beautifully the way that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And any concerns about, you know, auditing and being able to be accountable for how how the funds were being spent now? None at all. In fact, that, that's been one of the wonderful things for my staff is that we have everything at our fingertips when we log in to the admin side of the class wallet um, website. But all we have to do is what we would do at the end of every month, the first few days of a new month, we would print out the orders approved in the month prior and the reimbursements approved in the month prior and book those into our system to the appropriate school. And we let all of, all of that detail just exist in class wallet. We didn't want to double enter all of that. That seems like a huge waste of time. Yeah. So that's how we simplified it as much as possible. And, you know, we haven't lived through an audit yet using class wallet. I guess we will um, find out exactly how happy the auditors are with it in the fall, but I have no reason to think that we don't have all of the documentation we need for all of these transactions. That's right. You, you probably would, would hate to go through an audit with your teachers and say, can you provide a physical copy yes. of all these receipts? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And, and can you share a little bit more about, uh, you know, you, you said that you were looking to expand uh, the usage of the platform. Uh, can you share a little bit and elaborate on where you guys are uh, considering that for the upcoming year? Certainly. There are... Um, at each of the schools, in addition to the state mandated money, there are the activity, music, art, PE. There are others at all the different schools that have their own little budgets. And this year, as the year went on, we were asked by principals and by the teachers who don't already use this platform, can we be added to that? And the answer all year long has been yes, just wait until the summer and we will add you for next year. So at a minimum, those. But I think we will also um, add some purses for special education supplies and materials, probably some of our other restricted fund supplies and materials that the principals can order at their school. Well, it won't be the principal ordering it, but whoever they delegate that mm -hmm. responsibility to so that they can do that on their own and have it um, certainly shipped either to home or to school, whatever their needs are. Um, I just think it, it, provides a, it provides a lot more autonomy and a lot more freedom at the same time, giving us everything we need to pass an audit with no problem.